the year 1979, 40 years ago. And the date was the first of Muharram in the year 1400 of the Hijrah. The date was intentional. First Muharram, 1400 Hijrah. A group of overzealous fanatics stormed the Kaaba with submachine guns and held the Kaaba hostage. These were not non-Muslims. These were overzealous fanatics from within our faith. These were people who were the father of the Quran. These were people who were students of Islamic knowledge. These were people whom some of the greatest ulama knew by name. In fact, some of the greatest ulama's children were a part of this group. Some of the great ulama, their own sons were a part of this group. And this group was a overzealous fanatical group that felt that the end of times was close by the judgment was going to come and that they had discovered who the Mahdi was and so they held the Kaaba hostage after Salat al-Fajr and they announced on the microphone they took the microphone after the end of Fajr and they announced that we now have the Mahdi and everybody has to give the oath of allegiance to the Mahdi and they took forward a man by the name of Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Qahtani. And they said, this is the Mahdi that has been predicted in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And at the end of a gun, they forced the Hujjaj, the Indians, Pakistanis, Bengalis, Egyptians, have no clue what's going on. They forced them, you have to give the oath of allegiance. These are Hujjaj, it was the Hajj season. Many of the Hujjaj were still there. It was just a, a, a few weeks after Hajj, first of Muharram, right? Three weeks after Hajj, most of the Hujjaj were still still there and they didn't understand what's going on all they know is guns and whatnot and point and shoot so they were forced to give the oath of allegiance to this man not understanding what is happening and then they locked shut the doors of the haram and they barricaded with machine guns and they went took snipers to the very minarets that we know this is the same structure that still exists they took snipers to the minarets of the haram and of course as you know the agencies and the government and whatnot as you know, with, with, without trying to be too harsh, but they are not prepared to deal with these things. And frankly, they don't have emergency plans in place. Let's just be very nice about it. They have no clue what is going on. It took them a day even to react to what is going on. They have no clue what is happening. And they send in the first you know, group of soldiers and the snipers shoot them dead. Blood was shed on that day, on the first of Muharram, the very end of the first of Muharram, blood was shed. And that's when the government went into panic mode. They had no clue what is going on, no understanding of what is happening. And they wanted to clamp down on all the media, which made matters worse because rumors began to spread. Who is holding the Kaaba hostage? Salah was stopped in the Kaaba for almost two weeks. Tawaf was stopped. People stopped doing Tawaf. People were almost starving because they were held hostage. The one Hujjaj over there. Firstly, women and children as well then after a few days they let the women and children out but then many of the men were forced and then eventually bit by bit they left the men go until only the core fanatics remained almost two weeks later the Saudi military uh, with the help of French commandos the CIA of France you know the secret military police of France was brought in and they were stationed in Ta'if and they taught the Saudis overnight how to use gas mustard gas from World War one they taught them how to use very difficult techniques like electrocuting people in water very very dastardly but there was nothing to be done and after a grim battle with hundreds of people dying in the course of two weeks obviously i'm being very hasty about this hundreds we don't know the actual number of people that were killed hundreds of police officers and hundreds of the people of the followers of this fanatic and these bodies and corpses were in front of the kaaba itself and there's gun war battle going on between the the the, the very pillars they tried to storm Safa and Marwa with tanks. And so the, 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 the staircase leading up to Safa was destroyed because the tanks tried to attempt to go in. But the guy that they called the Mahdi rushed in and he threw a grenade into the tank. 
and the tank exploded and they took this as a sign that Allah was on their side, that they destroyed the tank. This made them even more confident that the haqq is with us and Allah is on our side. And they kept on fighting to the very end until finally after a very bitter, bitter battle with uh, the help of, as we said, the French commandos and the techniques that they, that they devised. Finally, the last bastion of this group surrendered. Over 70 plus of them were caught alive and every one of them except for four or five who were below the age of 15 they were executed uh, by the uh, by chopping off of their heads around the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and they were nationalities of all types Saudis Yemenis Pakistanis there was even one American amongst those fanatics who gave the oath of allegiance and they thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was on their side and they thought that they had the Mahdi and as we will study right now inshallah ta'ala the hadith tell us that the Mahdi shall be somebody who will seek refuge in the Kaaba and that the oath of allegiance will be given to him between the Rukn and the Maqam between the Rukun Yamani and the Maqam Ibrahim that very short spot that he will stand there and the oath will be given to him so this group essentially wrote a Hollywood script based upon the hadith and they chose the actors based upon the script from the hadith and they then enacted a scene as if it is a Hollywood movie coming from the hadith and they became the actors and they said okay the hadith mentions he's gonna be called Muhammad that name is Muhammad the hadith mentions he's gonna have a straight nose this Muhammad has a straight nose and I'm being oh, this is exactly what the hadith says the hadith mentions that he will be given the bay'ah between the rukun and maqam we're gonna make sure the bay'ah comes between rukun and maqam and the hadith mentions that an army will be sent to fight them in the Kaaba. They will seek refuge in the Kaaba. This is why they went to the Kaaba, by the way. They will seek refuge in the Kaaba. And Allah will miraculously cause the earth to open up and swallow the whole army. This is what they were banking on. What was the end plan? 500 people could not destroy the Saudi government. 500 people could not destroy the whole militia or military. What was their goal? They firmly believed, and these were religious fanatics, by the way. They were religious folks. They were Hufav, they were ulama and sons of ulama. They were students at Medina. They were overall righteous people, or at least we should say, people assumed them to be righteous. They weren't in their real lives. They had a misunderstanding of the faith. But outwardly, they appeared to be righteous people, and they felt Allah was on their side. And so they were confident that when we bring the Mahdi to the Kaaba, and the oath will be given to him, no matter what army is sent, Allah will destroy the army. We just have to wait for Allah's help. But no help came.